Welcome back to Technique Quad. I'm Doug Larson with the Barbell Shrug Podcast. You can find us at barbellshrug.com. Uh, a little while back, we did a three-part series on core stability training. We talked about um, anti-extension, resisting this hyperextended low back position by contracting our abs and our glutes and pulling ourselves back into a neutral pelvis, which is something that we're going to further touch on today. We also talked about anti-lateral flexion and anti kind of trunk or spinal rotation, keeping ourselves in a neutral uh, spinal position at all times by using our trunk musculature to resist movement rather than produce movement. So today what we're going to do is we're going to dig into resisting hyperextension just a little bit uh, by talking about um, front levers and ice cream makers and all those kinds of cool variations you can do on the rings. So first, if you don't know what a front lever is, it looks like this. If I'm holding onto the rings, I'm in this position where I'm contracting my abs, I'm squeezing my butt, my pelvis is kind of rolled back into me, my body's very straight, my shoulders are tucked together, I'm externally rotated, and I'm in this, this perfectly horizontal front lever um, position here. So, this is a hard position to do on the rings. Usually what we do is we, excuse me, we usually either bend one leg or bend both legs and we practice in this horizontal position, but with uh, slightly better leverage because we're bending our knees and that lever arm of our legs isn't quite as long so it's a little bit easier. Uh, the other way that we can scale that movement is instead of starting horizontal and flat, we can start vertical and then we can put our, this is my head and this is my feet, I can put my feet just barely out in front of me and then as I get stronger I can put it more out in front of me further and further and further until I'm all the way flat. Okay? So here's what that looks like on the rings, what you want to do is first you need to be able to go upside down or um, invert yourself on the rings. So I'm going to start upside down like this and then I'm going to try to get where my, my lower legs are facing the wall in front of me and then I can eventually put one leg out and that's about all the farther I'm going to go on the front lever. So uh, one leg out is pretty tough. I uh, might be able to hold there for a little bit if I'm, if I'm really putting out some effort. Both legs out all the way flat on a front lever uh, is, is very, very difficult if you've never tried it before. So, uh, so that's what I want you to start with. Start with both legs tucked, one leg out, and then if you'd like you can try both legs out and there's some other variations that are, that are mixed in there as well that I'm not going to talk about today. We're just going to stick to those three. The other way, again, is to start upside down, fully inverted on the rings. Shoulders back, externally rotated, then point your toes, just kind of lean forward a little bit. Okay, what I'm doing, what I'm doing there, again, contract my abs, squeeze my butt, I'm staying all the way straight, shoulders back in a good position, my elbows are kind of pointing up to the ceiling, I'm like this, I'm not like that, I'm not bowed and hyperextended, which is a very common thing to see. A lot of times uh, people won't rotate at the shoulder, what they'll do is they'll hyperextend their back to get their feet out in front of them. So that'll kind of look like this. They'll be here and they won't move their shoulders at all, they'll just go like this. Okay. That's a terrible position to be in. That's exactly what we're trying to work not to do. We're trying to work on adding load uh, to this hollow position where I, I'm contracted here, I'm squeezing my butt and I'm not hyperextending at my back. The more I let my feet fall without rotating the shoulder, the more I get into that position that we're trying to avoid. Okay? So, uh, again, if you start inverted, you're only going to have to go maybe to like a 20 degree angle or so in order to get a pretty good load and try and work up to you know, like a 30 second hold. Once you can get that, you can try to go lower and lower and lower um, as you improve over time. Uh, some of the other more dynamic variations of the front levers uh, in include uh, things like tops pulls where you're starting in a pull-up position and then you're going all the way to, an, to a 100% inverted position and then back to a pull-up, which that kind of looks like this. If I'm here, I can start at the top of a pull-up, keeping straight, lead leading with my feet just a little bit. I can pull all the way to inverted and I can stay straight and go right back to the top of the pull and then right back to the inverted position, trying to control on the way down and then ending up at the top, at the top of the pull up. Now uh, the other variation that we like to do is called an ice cream maker and that looks kind of like this. <clears throat> the ice cream maker, I'm starting at the top and I'm going to 
kind of get a little, I usually get a little bit of a swing, you don't necessarily have to, but the more of a little bit of a swing that you have, the easier it'll be. And then you're gonna push yourself all the way back until you are 100% flat um, in that full front lever position, and then immediately you're gonna swing back to that full pull up. Uh, you can do this with a false grip or without a false grip. Um, I'd say false grip's probably a little easier because it makes your arm a little shorter. Uh, for the moment, I got a little bit of a medial elbow thing going on, so I'm not gonna use a false grip, but uh, I'm gonna encourage you to try it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the top of the movement, keeping that hollow position. I usually get a little bit of a swing to start with, and then I push myself away until I'm all the way flat, and then you can kind of rock into a little bit of a rhythm. Okay. You can rock, rock into that little bit of, of a rhythm. If you try to resist it on the way back and you don't go all the way to a fully extended elbow, then you're gonna kind of kill that rhythm and you're gonna fall or you're just gonna, what usually happens in that case is I, if I'm here and I resist, I go halfway. Usually when I try to pull back up, I only make it about halfway up on my pull up and that kind of kills that little bit of a swing that you get. If you get that swing correctly, you really don't have to be that strong to do ice cream makers. It's really about letting your feet pull your body up and then your body pull your feet up and vice versa. Your center of mass really isn't going up and down so you're not really pulling that hard if you get that rhythm correctly. Uh, so those are kind of some fun ways to play with uh, that resisting hyperextension um, training method. Uh, if you have questions about that, again, you can go to barbellshrug.com and ask us some questions. We'll make a new daily BS um, on, or Technique Wad um, on your new question. See you next time. If you like this video or any of our other videos, make sure to share it on your Facebook wall by clicking share and then the Facebook icon and then also like it. Thanks, Shrug Thugs.